Hello everyone and welcome to a wonderful game from round one of the American Cup that started today. Uh, a lot of you have already suggested it and as usual for good reasons. Uh, it is a game of many ups and downs but ultimately it is the final position that will bring, uh, 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 well, I, I, I dare say a huge smile on everyone's face. Uh, so let's dive straight into it. It's Wesley So uh, versus Samuel Sevian. Wesley has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we have knight to f6 uh, by Sevian, uh, c4, we have e6, knight to c3, and bishop to b4. Seems like everyone is playing the names of Indian nowadays, uh, and we uh, discussed that usually uh, e3 and queen to c2 are considered the absolute top most sound moves. a3 is something that we've covered a lot lately as um, uh, people have used it to maybe avoid the queen c2 or e3 line. Uh, we've even shown knight to f3, I think, yesterday, and uh, here we have the standard e3. Three, the uh, so-called traditional line. We have castles by Sevian and bishop to d3 by Wesley, the so-called bishop attack against the Nimzo Indian. We're going to put our queen on c2 and we're going to have a nice queen bishop battery along this diagonal. So d5, black strikes in the center as one usually does uh, when going for the Nimzo Indian. And now c captures on d5. Usually uh, uh, just continuing development is the way to go here. I guess Wesley wants to take um, uh, Samuel out of the book very early on. So e captures on d5 and now a3. We challenge the bishop, but there's no need to uh, trade our bishop for a knight now. We just go back, bishop to d6, and queen to c2 now. Uh, we have c6, strengthening our d5 pawn, and knight g to e2 by Wesley. We have rook to e8, and now bishop to d2. Uh, knight b to d7, both players just uh, continuing development, putting pieces on optimal squares, and now f3. So it seems that Wesley will castle queenside, and he is setting up for a nice kingside attack, as black already castled, and uh, well, you, you know where to attack. So c5, uh, we often say that the absolute best way to counterattack uh, uh, your opponent's attack on the kingside is to counterattack in the center of the board. Uh, Wesley strikes with h4, and here there uh, are uh, two games uh, that have reached this position uh, where a6 was played but here Sevian plays h5 and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see uh, how does Wesley go about to this. Uh, he castles queenside first. Uh, we have a6 and now uh, there's no more uh, uh, time to, to waste. Uh, he strikes uh, on the king side with the g4. Now this means that he is giving up a pawn. Uh, but what is one pawn uh, when you can open up a nice uh, g file for your rook and you can start the attack a little bit earlier. So h captures on g4, f captures, knight captures on g4 and now uh, we have h5. You could also consider knight captures on d5. It's a fun line that we can show, for example, c captures on d4, e captures on d4, and now you have to play knight d to f6. Uh, going for material with knight to f2 isn't really all that great because rook h to g1 and black uh, is already in a lot of trouble. For example, you grab the rook, queen captures on d1, and white has uh, very nice attacking resources here. The pawn is marching forward, the queen is coming to f1. You can uh, it's very easy to organize an attack here. So basically what you would do is just put the knight on f6 and uh, uh, it's it's a uh, it's a position that you can play. However, Wesley goes for the full attack. He goes for h5, and now we have knight back to f8. Again, uh, you could go for knight to f2 here, but um, uh, for example, if knight to f2 here, Wesley could just strike with h6 right away. And now let's say knight captures on h1. There's even this beautiful bishop to h7 check, king h8, h captures on g7, king g7, and now rook to g1 with check. King to f8 and now rook to g8 with check. King e7, knight captures on d5, king e6 and queen to f5 checkmate. So it's not a completely forced line, but you will uh, get in a lot of trouble if you try go for, uh, going for material here. So knight back to f8. We need to help out with the defense here, especially with the h7 square. Uh, and now comes rook d to g1. Here, uh, maybe uh, con con uh, uh, continuing with h6 would have been a little bit better, but it's always um, uh, difficult to choose choose when to push that pawn. For example, here h6 is just very, very strong. Uh, Sevian would, of course, counter with g6, and then the position continues. Of course, you can never capture with the knight because rook d to g1 
and uh, you will not be able to defend this. There's already the threat of just rook captures on h6, and it's a, a terrible position for black. Uh, but instead, we have rook d to g1. That uh, makes sense. You want to have both of your rooks ready to attack here. But now, knight to f2 is a viable option, and this is exactly what Samuel goes for. Uh, d captures on c5 by Wesley. Again, h6 uh, is probably a little bit better, but okay, d captures on c5. And now, not the bishop captures on c5, but rather bishop to e5. There's no reason to grab this pawn you would only uh, run into trouble and the reason Wesley did this is so he can win the f4 square for his knight and get another attacker into the game so of course we're not going to allow this Sevian goes for bishop to e5 and the bishop is uh, an excellently placed piece here not only is it a great attacker but it's also a great defender of black's position here so finally Wesley does push h6 now we have g6 and h7 with check and you get this position what do you play here can you grab the pawn or do you ignore the pawn and hide the king? Well, it's a uh, very, very uh, short uh, line, so we can just show it. If you if you capture here, then bishop captures on g6 and uh, black's position just falls apart. For example, knight g5, we want to uh, keep the g file closed. Uh, we're going to play knight to f4. We just add more firepower here. And after some like king to f8, we can even play bishop captures on f7. So this is, uh, you can pretty much play whatever you want here and you're going to win this position with white. Uh, let's say knight captures, knight the g6 check. We force the king back to the g file. King g7, now we can pick up this with check, king back to f8, knight g6, check, king goes back, we go knight to f4, a discovery again from the rook, and after king f8, there's even the beautiful rook to g8 check, and uh, okay, now you can go to e7, but still, it's not going to be enough, we just start gobbling up on the d, d5 pawn, or if captures, just queen to h7, check, king here, and now knight to g6 will be checkmate, just to show you uh, what, a, what a crazy attacking position this is, and if Sevian doesn't want to lose this terribly, he has to play everything perfectly, so king to h8, the only good move for black, and now we have rook to h6 by Wesley. It's not all that easy continuing this attack, uh, as uh, Sevian is defending extremely well. But now rook h6, now we put even more pressure on that g6 pawn. And here comes bishop to g7. He says, all right, uh, get your rook away from there. Wesley has to go back, rook h2, and now knight to g4. We uh, get our knight back into the game with tempo. The rook is attacked, rook to h3, now knight to e5. And now we can capture the bishop on d3 at will, uh, uh, thus removing one of the attackers. So here, rook h to g3. Again, Wesley piles up on that g pawn. And now, while you could capture the bishop right away, uh, there's really no need to do it. Uh, knight to e6 is played. So uh, Wesley, uh, Wesley is now... Uh, uh, being tasked with uh, uh, finding a continuation to this attack, and it's not easy. Uh, he finds knight to f4, but that's exactly why the knight was placed here, uh, so you cannot uh, get this knight into the game, uh, but there is no better move. Uh, of course, you can always play something like b4, but that's that would be very, very slow. It would be, it would be like claiming, yeah, okay, my position is totally fine, let's just push a pawn on the queen side. Uh, so knight to f4 here, and finally we have a trade. Knight captures, pawn captures, and now, uh, only now when you have to move the knight, will you trade on d3 with check. We have queen captures on d3, and now d4. Grabbing more space here, forcing the knight to move. Uh, knight to e4, and now a beautiful queen to d5. Uh, this isn't uh, only um, uh, centralizing the queen, but it also comes with tempo. The knight is now hanging, and uh, you can't really defend it. If you play rook to e1, bishop to f5, and that's it. Uh, Wesley can resign. So instead, uh, Wesley plays knight to g5. Now he's ready to put even more pressure on the black king, but now queen captures on c5 with check. We have king to d1. If king to b1, again, bishop f5 is game over. So we have to put the king to d1, and now queen back the d5. Now you can see that uh, Seven has some ideas of maybe even infiltrating on the queen side here. Uh, and uh, the problem for Wesley is that it's not all that easy to uh, figure out how to continue the attack. The f7 square is covered by the queen, and how are you uh, pushing through here? So Wesley says, all right, maybe it's time to cut our losses. Uh, we are not breaking through here. Queen to f3 is played, uh, but now comes uh, queen to a2. And this, in fact, is not the absolute best way to play this. It's a very, very tricky position. Best way to play this is just bishop to e6. Uh, but, uh, you know, tell the truth. Uh, who, who, who amongst us would play bishop to e6 here? So queen to a2 was played, but now Wesley finds a, a beautiful uh, equalizing idea. Knight captures on f7 with check. 
queen captures on f7 and the rook captures on g6. And now you're threatening to just pick up the bishop and then pick up the queen and you will have sufficient compensation as you have the bishop, the queen and the passed f pawn which should be uh, easily winning for you. Uh, the problem is there is one move that saves a Sevian and it's a very very difficult move to spot so feel free to pause the video here and try to find the only move that doesn't lose for Samuel uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this brilliancy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to d3. That's the good stuff. Sometimes in a, such a such a, a terribly tricky uh, position, you have to spot a move like this. What it does is that uh, it, it cuts off the white, white queen's control over the b3 square. And now queen to b3 is definitely a threat. The problem is if you guys were considering some moves like let's just move the bishop, then there's rook g8 to check. And after king captures on h7, queen h1, and that's it. There's no uh, recovering from this. Or if you tried something else, uh, for example, rook to e7, you want to... Uh, trade here or maybe defend the white would very very happily trade here you're gonna start pushing your f when you have a queen and the bishop uh, this will be winning for white so the only way not to lose this with black is to play d3 once again congratulations to everyone who, who spotted this uh, and the the idea is that uh, if queen captures on b3 then we have bishop to f5 this freeing move and then black is back in the game the problem is uh, this is the only way for Wesley to continue playing this game and we will show it because it's extremely important so queen captures on d3 is a must uh, and bishop to f5 comes next attacking the rook and the queen we're gonna play rook captures on g7 here uh, but of course now comes queen to h5 check king to c1 uh, we pick up the white queen and now rook to c7 very important move as it prevents the rook from delivering check to the white king and now how are you stopping bishop to c3 check Wow, what a what a position. Uh, there is only one move uh, that uh, prevents uh, Wesley from winning this, and that is rook to e7. We uh, cut off this rook's defense of the h pawn, and now bishop to c3 check can be made, met with king captures on h7, and after rook captures on e7 check, we unfortunately had to give up the rook for this. King h6, now bishop to g7 check, and we are now entering a threefold repetition uh, because... Uh, uh, neither side can make any progress here. King h7, we're going to play king uh, bishop to e5 check, open up a discovery. Here you can see all of the squares uh, are, are covered, uh, except for the h6 square, and there's no way to increase the pressure here. So here we would have to uh, settle for a nice perpetual, and it would end in a draw. Uh, Wesley did not go for this after d3. Wesley played bishop to e3, giving his king uh, the d2 square to hide uh, hide his king. The problem is uh, this does not work, as uh, Savion quickly shows. He plays queen to b3 with check king to e1 of course king c1 queen to c2 checkmate so king e1 now comes d2 with check uh, that king is never reaching that d2 square and also if you played king to d2 then we have just queen to c2 check king e1 d2 everything comes with check and now the queen is even better positioned here so there really isn't uh, all that much you can do here so king to e1 is a little bit better but d2 comes with check and uh now you simply can't capture with the bishop uh, due to the rook being here if you capture with the king then again you uh, bl pretty much any move black plays is winning but the simple bishop f5 bringing the rook into the game will be sufficient let's say rook captures on g7 queen to d3 check king to e1 rook captures on e3 we pick up the queen we checkmate the white king uh, and that's it uh, so after d2 check king to f2 was played and now comes the uh, final move of the game and that is pawn to d1 and uh, here Sevian promotes it to a queen and it was in this position on move 36 that Wesley so resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here but what I find uh, spectacular about this position is that it doesn't matter what you uh, bring um, uh, into the game for example uh, if you bring uh, a bishop into the game uh, there's still no move for white. You don't really have to bring a queen into the game. Your, your uh, white's queen is now under attack and there's no good move here. You can play queen captures on d1, but now you no longer have control over the e3 square. And after king g2, you're going to play queen e4 check, king h2, queen f4 check, because the king cannot remain on the g file. You're going to pick up the rook. Uh, once you block this, we're going to play queen f2 check. You're going to block this queen h4 check, and that's pretty much it. King g1, bishop d4 check, and now... Uh, okay, what do you play here? Queen captures on d4. We're going to pick up the queen and very quickly checkmate the 
uh, the, the white king. It seems like white has something here, but not really. Uh, the h pawn uh, is undefended, so that's that's a big issue. So uh, another thing after king to, king to f2, you could also play d1 knight. You could bring a knight into the game with tempo. Now, okay, let's say you capture with the rook. Still doesn't matter. Queen to c2 with check, and after the queen blocks, now we just pick up the rook here. Queen captures on g6, white has nothing here. Black is up a full bishop and a full rook. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, of course, after king to f2, you could also bring a rook into the game, uh, but uh, still there is nothing. Thing for for white to try here we've already tried everything if you if you capture the bishop here let's say rook captures on g7 uh, we can just capture the pawn on b2 and after some like king to g3 uh, or if you go anywhere uh, along the g file then the g7 rook is no longer protected so we're going to have to block with something like queen to e2 not just queen captures on e2 king captures on e2 and the rook captures on g1 white is simply down too much material rook captures king captures and now you are up a full rook of course completely winning here so it's uh, really an amazing position where, uh, especially, uh, you know, between top grandmasters where you can promote a pawn uh, on move 36 and it doesn't matter what you promote it to, everything is completely winning. So I thought you guys uh, might enjoy this one. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Big congratulations to Sevian on such a, such a spectacular game. Wesley could have uh, uh, could have won if things uh, went a little bit more his way, but it was like I said, a game of many ups and downs. Uh, but uh, when Sevian spotted this uh, brilliant, brilliant d3 move, that uh, well, it's basically the only move that saves the position, cuts off the b3 square from the white queen. Uh, this uh, bishop to e3 simply was insufficient. Queen captures on d3 was. A must Wesley didn't play it and uh, thus he lost the game uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it the first round of the American Cup has uh, finished uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, Dave Ellis Pratam Shekhar Mahajan USFD EFRI USFD EFRI and Nicholas Padal for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one uh, and whatever else is happening in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.